So what ni kao? Welcome to a special episode of Hot Thai Kitchen. So today I am going to take you shopping. That's right, because maybe this has happened to you. You want to cook a Thai dish, so you go to the Asian store, and then you find yourself staring cluelessly at 10 different fish sauces, and you have no idea what to buy. And you think, gosh, I wish I had a Thai auntie right here to help me. Well, I am your Thai auntie, and today I'm going to help you navigate the store for all the major Thai ingredients, so that you can cook some great Thai food. Let's get started. So I am here at TNT, which is a chain of Asian supermarkets all across Canada. Now they're not specialized in Thai or Southeast Asian products or anything, so it's probably representative of what most of you have access to, which is exactly why I chose this store for this tour. So I'm just gonna stop briefly at the produce section because it's pretty straightforward. They either have it or they don't, right? But there's something to talk about here. So lemongrass. So some stores will have lemongrass that's sold in whole stalks, and then other stores like them, they have lemongrass cut in half. The important thing to know here is that the flavorful part of the lemongrass is in the bottom half of the stalk. So when you look at something like this, you don't want to just willy-nilly use whatever. You want to find the one with the thicker base, that's the one from the bottom part, and use that. The top part, you can throw it in as a bonus piece. I usually just freeze it and save it for stocks and things like that. You definitely don't want to just use the top part in your cooking. And also, a cool thing to check out is these little kits, which I've seen in many different stores. This is a tom yum kit. It comes complete with lemongrass, galangal, kaffir lime leaves, and Thai chilies for your tom yum soup. So this is important because for some stores, they might not carry fresh galangal separately, but it'll come in a kit like this. So this is a really well-stocked produce section. They got fresh galangal, they got fresh lime leaves. But if you don't find them fresh, check the freezer. A lot of times stores will only have the frozen version. And you know what? When I buy these, I'm gonna go home and freeze them anyway. So totally okay to use. I'm stopping here at the frozen seafood section because I want to point out that this is where you can find head-on shell-on shrimp. So when I first came to Canada, um, I went to buy shrimp and I was like, shrimp here have no heads. Where are all the shrimp heads? Because shrimp heads are so good in soups and stocks, so flavorful. Turns out you gotta go to an Asian store for that stuff. And if you don't have fresh, you can always get frozen. And also I wanted to point out one cool little thing here. See this tea right here on this box? This is called the Thailand Trust Mark, which you can find on many different Thai products. And what this means is that the company has been government certified to be environmentally friendly, socially responsible, and employs fair labor practices. So when you see this tea on product, that is a good thing. This is the juicy part. This is when people's eyes start to glaze over, is all the sauces. Now, I'm standing in front of fish sauce, and you might think that, oh, fish sauce is probably with soy sauce and with oyster sauce all together. Well, maybe, but in some stores, that's not the case. So in here, for example, they have a dedicated aisle for Southeast Asian products, and that's where the fish sauce is, which is not where the Chinese and Japanese soy sauces are, which we'll get to that in a bit. But let's talk fish sauce. For Thai cooking, of course, you want to use Thai fish sauce. And so Squid, many of you know, this is my go-to brand for everyday Thai cooking. It's not premium by any means, but it's perfectly fine for everyday use. It's not expensive and it's widely available. This is a big bottle. If you're not going to cook Thai food that often, I recommend you look for smaller bottles, which is usually hidden on the top shelf. This is a smaller bottle, much more suitable for occasional Thai food cooks. And fish sauce, doesn't last forever in a sense that once you open it the flavor gets worse and worse over time so if you're not going to use it up quickly smaller bottle is the way to go now if you don't have thai fish sauce vietnamese fish sauce is totally totally fine for thai cooking for example three crabs is a really good one that you can use however um, it tends to be a little bit on the lighter side less salty side compared to thai fish sauce but regardless of whatever kind of fish sauce you use what you want to look for is the ingredient list you want to look at the label and there should be as few ingredients as possible. Anchovy extracts or anchovies, salt, sugar, water, and nothing else. There should be no flavor added, no color added, because if they're adding those things, you better believe they're making up for the fact that there isn't that much fish in there. 
in the Southeast Asian Isle is where you might also find sweet soy sauce. So if you're looking for sweet soy sauce and you're at the soy sauces and you don't see it, check to see if there's a Southeast Asian spot because Indonesian sweet soy sauce is the main kind of sweet soy sauce that is available and it is also okay to use for Thai cooking, although we don't use it very often. When Thai people are not eating rice, you better believe we are eating rice noodles. So let's take a brief stop here. Two things you need to be concerned about. One, you want to make sure it's a product of Thailand and that it's made only from rice and no tapioca added because some Vietnamese uh, rice noodles will have tapioca added and so it's a little bit of a different texture. The Thai ones will only have rice. Now, sizing tends to vary from brand to brand. Normally I have like a small, medium, large. The TNT house brands name their sizes a little bit differently. So this one, they call it thin. And this is good for noodle soups. And it's also good for pad thai actually, if you want to use that for pad thai. But the thinner ones are better for soups in general. And then these, these ones, which they call medium, is a little bit thicker than I would go for pad thai. But in general, this is totally fine for stir fries as well. And then there's the large ones, or what they call the thick one. This is definitely for stir fries. And this is meant to be sort of a replacement for the fresh rice noodles, the ho fun noodles that are, you know, so popular in Pat Siu and things like that. If you don't have fresh, this is the dry one that you would use instead. And then there are these tiny, tiny little ones which are called rice vermicelli. These are great for soup, stir fries, just about anything. And they're really quick to cook for perfect if you're in a hurry. So the rule of thumb for dry noodles is the smaller ones are better for soups and all sizes are okay for stir fries. So I'm at curry paste section, which is a bit of a trickier one because it's hard to tell which one is good just by the packaging. But there are two things you can look for. One, you absolutely need to make sure it is a product of Thailand because yes, I've seen Thai curry paste not made in Thailand and they are not very good. So once you've got that down, then you want to look at the ingredient list and you want to go with one with only just herbs and spices and salt, no oil or sugar or other seasoning, no extraneous stuff. I want my curry paste to be as pure as possible and then I will take it from there. Aroidi is a great brand that I've used before and Meploy is another one that I use again and again but they don't have that here but this is a really big tub. This will last you a very long time if you're an occasional Thai cook so maybe look for something in sort of single-use packet like this. And I also have a video that goes really deep into Curry Paste 101 and I go into much further detail about how to choose the right curry paste for you and I will link to that in the description below. Tamarind. Cooking tamarind. So if you're not at a Southeast Asian specific store, your choices for tamarind is going to be pretty slim. So here I have exactly one to choose from and it's way the heck over here on the top shelf which I can barely reach. And by the way, it says tamarind concentrate. In my recipes, I call it tamarind paste. It's the same thing. It's not really a concentrate, but that's just what the label says. Um, this is a product of Thailand. It's totally fine to use. However, my preference is for making tamarind paste myself using the block of tamarind pulp. I have a video all about that. I'll link to below. But if you don't have the block or you don't want to, you know, spend the time, this is totally fine. We are at soy sauce, which is a beast. This whole aisle behind me, that is all soy sauce. Not including the Southeast Asian soy sauces, which we already looked at there. This is only just Chinese and Japanese soy sauce. But not to worry, this is why I'm here. So soy sauces are organized in source generally in two different ways. One is by country of origin. Chinese soy sauces are together, Japanese soy sauces are together, Filipino soy sauces, etc, etc. Thai soy sauce usually are not available at stores such as this. If you want Thai soy sauce, which I totally recommend you get if you can find it, you got to go to stores that are specifically catering towards Southeast Asian, okay? But that's okay if you don't have it, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Korean, those will work totally fine as a substitute. So whichever kind you're gonna, you know, whatever, whichever cuisine you will cook more of, like if you also want to cook Japanese food, just get the Japanese soy sauce and use that for Thai food as well. Now, once you've located the country of origin of choice, then the soy sauces are divided by type. 
regular, dark, etc., etc. Let's say you've decided that Chinese soy sauce is what you want. So you go to the Chinese section. And if you're looking for just soy sauce with no further modification, then what you want to look for on the label is exactly that. Something that just says soy sauce. Maybe it's got a generic modifier like premium soy sauce or organic soy sauce. But the gist of it is just soy sauce. And usually, here's a pro tip, it's going to be stuff at your eye level because the stuff at eye level here and here, that's going to be where the most popular products are. Up top, down below, they're going to be something less frequently bought. For example, what you don't want is seafood flavored soy sauce. That's very specific, not the regular soy sauce. Or this says brown cooking soy sauce. I don't know what that is, but it's not regular soy sauce, so just don't worry about it. Within the category of regular soy sauce, you also have gluten-free soy sauce and low-sodium soy sauce or reduced sodium, different labels, but those are totally fine substitutes for the regular soy sauce if those things are of concern for you. If you have narrowed it down to what you want and you still have like four different brands to choose from, price. Price is generally a very good indicator of quality. If you're on a budget, the cheap one is fine, but if you're willing to spend a little bit more, you're probably gonna get a better product. Real quick, I wanna talk about light soy sauce. What is light soy sauce? It's a, it's a cause of confusion. They think it's low sodium or low calories or low something. It is not low in anything. Some brands just use the term light soy sauce to distinguish it from dark soy sauce. In other words, this is just regular soy sauce, okay? So for example, this brand has light soy sauce and has dark soy sauce. They don't have anything that just says soy sauce. For Thai brands, for Healthy Boy brand, which is the one that I use, it'll say thin soy sauce, which just means regular soy sauce. So don't let that confuse you. We've moved a little bit down the aisle. We're now standing in front of the dark soy sauce section. So dark soy sauce is used to add a darker color to food so it looks more appetizing. It's used usually in very small amounts and it's not as salty as regular soy sauce. For Thai recipes, for my recipes, we call it black soy sauce. They don't have Thai soy sauce here, so dark soy sauce, Chinese dark soy sauce is a perfect substitute for that, but it does tend to be a little more salty than Thai black soy sauce. So just keep that in mind when you're cooking. Oyster sauce. Now, I just did a deep dive video all about oyster sauce along with a blind taste test and everything, so definitely check that out. But briefly, the one thing you need to know about oyster sauce is that there are grades. There's the premium one and there's the basic one. The premium ones are more expensive and they are better. The basic one is cheaper, they're not as good, but you know what, for everyday cooking, budget cooking, it is totally fine. One giveaway is the price. If it's more expensive, it's likely better. Uh, the other giveaway is also the protein content. The higher protein, the more oysters, and the better quality it is. Now the most important part of your meal, rice. And there's only one type of rice appropriate for your Thai meal, and that is Thai jasmine rice. But how do you know that it's Thai jasmine rice? Because let me tell you right now, just because the back says jasmine rice doesn't mean it's the one that you want, okay? So what you need to look for is this big baby right here. First, Thai jasmine rice, you want to look for the word homali. Homali is the Thai name of the good stuff that you are looking for. The other thing that you want to look for is this green logo right here. This green logo is a Thai government certification that what's inside this bag is actually genuine Thai homily rice. And that's important because the word jasmine rice is not regulated. So if the bag says jasmine rice, inside the bag could be any number of varieties and you don't know whether it's the good one that Thailand is famous for or not. So that's the secret right there. Coconut milk. When you are at the coconut milk section, the first thing I want you to do is look past all the cans and then look for the paper cartons because yes, the stuff in the paper carton is better than canned. Coconut milk in paper cartons are processed differently from canned. And I talk more about this in my short documentary about how coconut milk is made. So I definitely recommend you checking that one out. But basically the heat is more intense for the cans and it destroys more of that good coconut flavor that we want. 
If you can't find it, it's fine. You can use the can, but if you have the option, always go for the UHT carton. This is the brand that I've used for years. It's still my favorite to this day. Whether you're looking at can or cartons, you want to look at the ingredient list. The fewer, the better. You're going to get an emulsifier or preservative. You really can't avoid that, but you don't want six different things on a label. It should be a very straightforward list. And I want to talk quickly about coconut cream because this confuses many people. Coconut cream is basically a higher fat version of coconut milk in the same way that cream is a higher fat version of milk. I never use it for anything. In Thai cooking, we usually just use coconut milk, but if there's a reason why you might want it to be fattier, this is what you would use. It would make a good non-dairy substitute if you're baking, for example, with cream. After you've got all the ingredients that you need, you never leave an Asian grocery store without some fun stuff. Let me show you some fun stuff. The freezer section is full of fun stuff, like this durian mochi ice cream. Frozen durian. If you've not joined the durian club yet, it's time to do that. And the frozen one is great. This is the stuff of my childhood. It is a classic. I love it. Chicken flavored coated peanuts. Sounds weird, but so good. Crispy shrimp cheeks. You know, think of a shrimp head and those little legs under the head. They take that, deep fry it. It's so addictive. More crispy shrimp things. This is Thai shrimp chips. The Koreans have theirs, the Japanese have theirs. This is the Thai one and it's good. This is another childhood favorite. This is Thai iced tea in a bottle, but it's made from soy milk. Mama, this is Thailand's number one brand of instant noodles. The best instant noodles you've ever had. You've got to try it. And by the way, it's in the Southeast Asian aisle, separate from the other instant noodle aisle. And that is it. I hope you found that helpful. And if you want to deep dive into any one ingredient, check out my Thai Ingredient 101 playlist, which I'll link to below. A special thanks to the Thai Trade Center and TNT for making this video possible. And of course, our Patreon members for supporting the show as well. Thank you as always for watching, and I will see you next time. Sawadee ka!